Because as, as of now, these are the AOI related changes that took place in 11. The ADM is kept at one ADM, that's business as usual. Um, if there is concurrency in, 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 or, or subsequently enrollment in another LEA. Um, the ADM is based on actual annual AOI instructions. It's not based on enrollment, it's based on actual attendance. Um, of instructional hours throughout the fiscal year. There is no 40 day or 100 day for AOI. It's the whole year around <coughs> program. Um, the hours is a little bit different and I have a table to show you those different hours. The funding for AOI for part-time student is at 85% of PSL or base support level and 100% of additional assistance for charter and 100% soft capital and unrestricted capital for districts. Um, this is the table for AOI FTE requirements. These are the, the requirements for FTE um, in, in an AOI environment. Probably the, the major difference is in 9 through 12, instead of 720 hours, they required 900 hours. Um, And we have, by the way, we have we have an AOI presentation on our website for fiscal year 11. If you want more details, I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of info about it as we we go through this. Does your AM work the same way here as it did in this example, where if they yes. with one and 920 hours, they're yes. 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 Okay. Yes. 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 AOI stands for online, so I don't, I can't get it. Arizona, Arizona online instruction. Okay. Uh, this table here give you, for AOI purposes, it give you the average daily instructional minutes um, and how much total annual uh, annual minutes required for each student to get ADM. And the reason why I have this, because I have an example that will include the AOI concurrency with traditional school and a JTED. So I kind of want you to kind of be familiar with these numbers. That's why we have them here. Um, AOI funding, um, the way it works for AOI funding, just an FYI, because you, you probably have some concurrency with AOI. The system will be looking at, once we have aggregated data, we have actual data. For every interval or a certain number of instructional days that, that, that is reported to us, the system will look at two numbers. What is the average per day for that particular period? And what is the total minutes that the student actually attended? Then compare those two numbers with the total required minutes and the average required minute a day. If the student meet either or, either one of those requirements, then that's what's going to be used for ADM purposes. So let's say if the average 200 minutes and the student met the average 200 minutes, but obviously early in the year the student would not have total minutes to meet the whole year to get one ADM, we will fund it based on the average of the 200 minutes, which is one ADM. Then we'll adjust as we go throughout the fiscal year. And I have example I'll show you in a minute how that works. But that's how an AOI setting works. That's probably the easiest way we could do it because of uh, the complexity of AOI and how you fund it. This is an example for um, AOI, which is what I just described. In this example, we have, um, as of October, um, school finance for an aggregation for November 1st payment during the month of October. The particular student had 36 instructional days. During the 36 instructional days, they had 7,992 minutes. That's an average of 222 minutes. For that particular student, um, and I think in the previous example, I put this at third grade. Um, it's a student in a, in a third grade. The, the, the average required minutes to get one ADM is 237.33. In, in this case, the student is not meeting the average a day, he's meeting 94% of that. The total hours required for that particular student is 42,720 in the whole year. But since we are still in October, November, you don't expect the student to meet all the hours, so it won't be fair 
to fund the student on only 7,000 minutes. So what we fund in the student at 0.94 ADM, which is the average, a percentage of the average required a day, the 237 minutes. Um, so and that student is a part-time student in this case, that's the assumption, so they will be funded at 85% of PSL. <laughs> that's what my son would give me, that look, you know, by, by now. <laughs> now concurrency, uh, we have made some changes starting this fiscal year in 11, and that's probably, you know, Mark didn't talk about it, but what we did, we, we looked at the system and uh, part of the problem in our system that was really slowing it down in addition to the old technology and other things is that we had two step process to limit funding to one ADM as required by statutes. We had a concurrency module and we had a limiting module. We have eliminated the concurrency module and we moved everything in one step process so it can go much faster. Um, so that's, that's part of the changes in fiscal year 11 that has taken in place and hopefully it will, speed, it will help speed up the process and eliminate some of the errors that we were, we were getting because a lot of the errors we were, having, we were having them with the concurrency module, not necessarily with the limiting module. Um, the, the limit to funding will be 1 ADM except when you have a JTED relationship. If you have a JTED relationship and you have a satellite membership, then that limit will be 1.25. If you have a, a JTED relationship with a charter, that will be 1.25 ADM. If it's a JTED relationship with a member district, that will be up to 1.75 ADM. That's the max we can fund. Um, and these are not new stuff. These are, they have been in, in place. I just want to put them as a reminder. Uh, the limiting module, it will apply to all entities regardless of the type or the, the, the overlap. Uh, again, these are just a drill down of what those limits are. And I want to give you an example on how that's going to work in fiscal year 12. And this could probably change, but you know, that's how I see it as of now. And we'll discuss it further with the advisory committee and see if, if that's still acceptable. Um, in, in this particular example, we have a student who's enrolled in three different schools throughout the fiscal year. The enrollment sinker entirely within the four points in time for September 15, November 15, January, and March. Um, the student had an overlap in membership in District A and Charter B in the first point of time, September 15 and November 15. The student withdrew from both schools on December 10 and re-enrolled in, 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 enrolled in a District C on January 10 and stayed there till the end of the year. So from looking at this example, the, the student had concurrent enrollment in A and B in the first two points, then withdrew and moved to C and had one enrollment for two point of times in C. Uh, so that how the ADM is gonna work and what will you be funded at is, is uh, what this example is trying to do. Um, assuming that the student was enrolled full time at all schools, uh, once data is aggregated after November 15, the first two entities will share the ADM to get one membership day each. Um, as you go throughout the year, we really don't know what's gonna happen in the future. So as of November 15, all we know that the student was enrolled in A and B. We don't know anything about C because that's still up in the air. Um, so as of that point in time when we do aggregation and we calculate ADM, each one, each school will get one ADM. Then in the limiting module, that's where, where the ADM is gonna be divided among A and B and each will get 0.5 each. Now, pass forward toward the uh, January 15 or after January 15 when the student withdrew from A and B. At that point in time, what we know that the student enrolled in C at that point in time and had concurrent enrollment in A and B in the first two points. So what the ADM is gonna look like for those schools. The ADM will, be, will, will change, the calculation will change after period three as follows. In, in, in both A and B, we're both gonna get 0.67 um, 
worth of ADM, which is one FTE for period September 15 and November 15, but they're going to get zero for January 15. So that's based on that enrollment, each will get a 0.67 because it's average of three point at times. And District C will get 0.33 for a total of 1.67, then that will be rashed down to 1 ADM according to, to, to what I have in there for A, B, and C. Now, toward the end of the fiscal year, once we have all periods covered, we know that the student enrolled at two memberships in C and covered two memberships for A and B. Um, so this is what the ADM is going to look like. We're going to take the FTE for the first period, the second period, zero for the last two periods for A and B. For C, they will have zero, zero for the first two periods and one and one for the last two periods. And we're going to just average that and get 0.5 for each one entity. Then we're going to ratchet down the 1.5 ADM to one. Is that making sense? Is that clear? I see a lot of... All the clue that it needs to be used out. It's in the first period, you had, it, you know, there's a quarter available in the first date. You have two entities getting each of that quarter, or 12.5% done. Second period, the same thing, 12.5% done. The third period, 100% of that quarter done. And the fourth period, 100% of that quarter done. Yeah. Add it up, you get 25, 25 and 50. Girls, we can't hear anything of what she's saying. So she's talking about the quarter periods, and she wants she wants it more simplified. Uh, as far as like when there's a concurrency, to simplify it each quarter and not wait till the end to calculate the whole thing. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Okay. Because yeah. it seems very convoluted, and the other way is so simple. It's just simple. Well, the, the thing about it is, you, if you knew this information in advance, it would be much easier. But we really don't know this information. When you go throughout the fiscal year, you don't know if the student is going to withdraw from any school and go enroll somewhere else. And you don't know if the student is going to be concurrently enrolled. So you'll have to do it for each school separately, then later on make the adjustments. And that's what makes it really complicated. If we knew this, if this is a fact that we knew in the beginning of the fiscal year, that would be much easier. But since we really don't know these info till, till later on as we go, then that's what makes it a little bit complicated. I think what she's saying is that each, after you get the second quarter two, you need, we need reports that show one and two so we can look at our ADM. And then when the third one comes up, one, two, and three, we can't wait until the fourth, uh, March uh, 15th hits, and then you do all this calculation. We need to see that Correct. period one after period two and so and, forth. And, and that's, I think, what I was trying to communicate here, that we will do the calculation every quarter. We're not going to wait till the end of the year. Okay. Um, and that's why I tried to walk you through this process, saying after aggregation on a certain point in time, we do this calculation, then pass forward to March, to January, etc. We do different calculations. Now, in terms of the reports, we will discuss it with the advisory committee and see how we're going to present that to you, whether we're going to show you every single period or do you want a cumulative, etc. We'll discuss this in more details. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions on this? I know it's a little bit complicated, but it's probably boring too. Yeah, <laughs> Go ahead. On your AOI example, you refer to an instructional day. Is that a day a student submits instructional time? And so perhaps the student doesn't work on Thursday, that's not an instructional day? Correct. So any day the student submits time? Correct, because you know in AOI it's actual attendance, it's not enrollment. In this example, I tried to put concurrently enrollment, and I included a JTED, a member district, and an AOI school. Somebody in there. Okay. Um, in this example, we have an one FTE, a 0.75 FTE for a member district, 0.5 FTE for a JTED satellite, and for AOI, 720 hours of actual instructional hours during the fiscal year. The maximum allowable ADM for this kind of concurrency is 1.25. Um, at the end of the fiscal year, this is what the ADM calculation is going to look like. We're going to literally calculate each school ADM. So the district will get 0.75 ADM, 0.5 
for the JTED, the AOI will have a 0.80 of a total 